The seventh metaphor that we're going to think about is substitution. And we have here this sign that says, Jesus did this just for you. This thought about what is it that Jesus did for us, there are two ways to understand that. That he did this for our benefit, which is true, or that he did this in our place, which is also true. And when we think about the substitution piece, we're arguing, suggesting that Jesus took the punishment that was ours. He did it in our place. He took our place and did that for his love and grace for us. This particular view is pretty standard, and most of us understand it and have got it deeply rooted in who we are in our understanding of Christianity. But we have to admit that there has been recently much controversy about this particular understanding. But the calling is to understand with substitution that he did this for us taking our place. So think a bit more about substitution or substitutionary atonement to give it its fancy name. This question arises a number of times in the, biblical, in the biblical text. And one of those is in Matthew chapter 27, verses 42 and 43. It comes from the crucifixion narrative itself. So back up to actually verse 41. In the same way the chief priests and the teachers of the law and the elders mocked Jesus, he saved others, they said, but he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. God let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. So that text asks the question of who should it be on the cross? Well, clearly, it shouldn't be Jesus. In fact, it should be the people who are accusing him, laughing at him, mocking him. It should be those who are killing him. It should be us. That text then raises those kinds of questions. And rooted in our understanding of the cross is that he took our sin. He became sin for us on the basis of the passages that we know from Isaiah 53. He bore our sin. He bore the marks that were ours. The stripes that were ours became his. Now, there are some people who question this, challenge this, because they argue, how can someone who is innocent, in fact, take the guilt of another? Well, I don't know if you can remember back to reading The Tale of Two Cities, the great Charles Dickens novel. But the very end of that, Sidney Carton takes the place of Charles Darnay and dies in Charles Darnay's place. Charles Darnay was a French aristocrat who, in the midst of the French Revolution, has been accused and sentenced to death. And Sidney Carton, who looks a lot like Darnay, in fact, they look so similar people can't tell them apart, Carton takes Darnay's place and dies in his stead. Carton's not the French nobleman, but he he becomes the replacement, the substitute for Darnay. So that he may not take the guilt of the other, but he certainly takes the punishment. A more deep criticism, and one that I think is worth thinking about, is that this can make us a very individualistic kind of approach, that Jesus died for me, which is true. But it then turns this potentially into, it's just Jesus and I having this great relationship together. As opposed to understanding that this offer of forgiveness, this offer of substitution, is for all of humanity. That Christ takes this place for all of us. Not just for me, but for all of us. So it's personal and corporate at the same time. A third criticism that's raised about this is that this may not invite people to discipleship, to following Jesus Christ, to following his pattern. That he takes our sin, we are forgiven, and that's it. I only have a problem with this particular approach, this particular understanding of substitution. I think the challenge is, how do we preach it? How do we express it? How do we live it out? What does it call us to? Because the reality is, is that if we read the biblical narrative, it's quite clear that Christ died for the ungodly. 
He died for us. We have no role in our own salvation. He's the one who acts, takes our place, and offers us salvation. But having had that experience, we are now called and implicated in that salvation to be people who now live in thankfulness and gratitude. So the reality that this becomes accused of being a very narrow individualistic calling, I think is wrong. I think substitution can be one that calls us to recognize the amazing gift offered to us in Jesus Christ and dying on the cross for us and calling us to deeper discipleship, deeper following, a following of this one who gave himself for us. So in substitutionary atonement, we have a new pattern that calls us to be people who follow Jesus Christ, having been forgiven by his great grace and love in dying on the cross for us. Thanks be to God.